In this video, we're going to take a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and load a preloaded uh, PSX Classic build on it. And it's going to give us Sega, Nintendo, Dreamcast, some additional PS1 games, PSP games, and way, way more. In this video, I'll show you some performance. I'll show you the build. We'll actually see all the games and how many games per system. But as you see, about 20 systems and thousands and thousands of games on here. So a uh, cool little build. Let's go ahead and check it out, how to set it up, and what to expect, and how to navigate it. You should have a bunch of .rar files. Go ahead and download a program called 7-Zip. It's totally free to get. And then you're just gonna right click it. It should say 7-Zip. You're just gonna say extract here. It's gonna extract this folder here. Open the folder. You're gonna see all the games here. You can even see you know, Dreamcast games, PS1 games, Ape Escape. Uh, PSP games, Sega games, Sega Master System, SNES. I'm just going to go ahead and format this again. I was using it for a different build, FAT32. Make sure it's FAT32. Make sure it's called Sony. Okay. Apply. This just takes a moment. All right. Now that we're formatted, let's go ahead and just copy this. Control C. Go to our Sony drive. It's empty. And go ahead and transfer it. It's going to take a little bit of time. But uh, once that's all done, we can just put in our Player 2 slot and boot up our. PlayStation Classic. Something great about this build is if you go to the ROMs folder, that is where all your games are stored. So for example, if you don't like the performance of Dreamcast, there's a good amount of gigabytes here, in, about 10 gigs. You can easily just delete these games just like that and be done with it. Or if you want to add additional games, you can easily drag and drop those into the file system here. It's that easy. Um, you want to add more um, you know, Nintendo DS games or some more Game Boy Color games or whatever the system is, you can easily drag and drop them here. So that is something nice. If some of you are just a little intimidated with auto bleam and getting it set up, you can start this as like a base image and then build on it from there, uh, do it to your liking. Um, so really easy to do. As far as how many games, Atari Lynx, you got 26. And Atari 2600, you got 562. 7800, you got 65. So as far as how many games, Atari Lynx, you have 86. Atari 2600, you have 562. 7800, you got 65. Dreamcast, I deleted them for the show you earlier, but it's about 11, 11 games or so. Game Gear, 313. Game Boy, 682. Game Boy Advance, 143. Game Boy Color, 603. MAME Arcade, 416. Second Mega Drive, 937. Uh, Nintendo DS, 62. Um, PC Engine Turbo Graphics 16, 287. Nice little collection there. Uh, PC Engine CD, about 146. Super Graphics 5 is pretty standard. NES, 1,333. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, 77. PS1, you get the original games plus Ape Escape. PSP, 15. Sega CD, you got 59. Sega Master System, 358. Sega 32X36, SG1077, SNES 1000, Neo Geo 147, Neo Geo Color, Pocket, not Color, 116, uh, and then Virtual Boy 28. Some of these systems I didn't see when I boot up. I think there's some fixes we need to do. But uh, as I said, this was one of the first versions, and there is a new version coming out soon. So let's go ahead and plug our USB into Player 2. Our PS Classic is off. We're now turning it on. So here it is on first boot. You have your main menu, all sorts of configuration options, settings, about drivers, input cores, configurations, on-screen displays, user interface, all that good stuff that comes with RetroArch typically. Um, you can also search, by the way, by hitting your triangle button and then typing in what you're looking for um, and then just hitting start when you're done typing. Um, this is going to play a lot of stuff, everything from Atari, you got arcade games, MAME, you have uh, Final Burn Alpha games, you have PC Engine, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Nintendo DS, 32X, Dreamcast. Now, they don't play that great, but they do run. I mean, I was really surprised by that. Same thing with PSP. Um, they run, I mean, and I was playing some uh, Power Stone and it ran 
pretty good. Um, there are bezels pre-installed, which they look decent. Um, and then the PlayStation games are just the original ones here. Um, but basically, this is it. You just want to click on the system. You can do a quick search, as I mentioned, to do search. Um, and then I want to show you some options when you're in the game. Even by hitting select and start, that's how you're going to exit the games. It's also how you're going to... Um, oh, this is like a different one. Let's go ahead and load Bugsy. Go ahead and run. You can add your favorites, have your own favorites list. But I'm going to show you here, if you hit select and start, you can restart the game, close the game. That's how you want to leave the game. And then go back to the home screen. Take a screenshot. You can still save your states, and you can change your state slot. So you can have up to how many slot? Oh, my. They do not mess around. I wonder if it goes past 1,000. All right. I want to see somebody's screen who's say Okay, it goes to 1,000. <laughs> thousand different ones you can load those states you can undo a save or save state I, I know you've all been there before we accidentally save it um, you can change the overlay you can even rewind um, you can enter cheat codes shaders all that stuff so the full functionality there um, so pretty cool stuff all that functionality is there for you um, there will be a new version of this build but you know here it is this should get you started uh, messing around this is really cool that it basically turns it into a full emulation machine, your PS Classic. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and play some gameplay so there will be no commentary. Um, I just wanted to play stuff that I thought would lag at first and then I played some of the other stuff that shouldn't lag at all, like Super Nintendo, Nintendo. And then finally, I leave my final thoughts. A solid beginning. What's going Let the battle begin. Go! Oh, no! Powerful! 
Hey, look, Mom playing one dash one on PS Classic. So final thoughts, you have pictures all set up. Look at all these beautiful pictures there for you on the right. Um, functionality is great. You don't need to solder anything on your PS Classic. So, you know, that part of it's just all good. No like additional files to overwrite. It's just transfer it, turn on your PlayStation Classic and there you go. Um, one caveat is, you know, you're only gonna have one port. So you might wanna get a USB hub um, I know you can get two players. Some people have been able to get four players on a USB hub, especially if it's powered. So you could still play, for example, um, whichever one of these systems can play Dreamcast, potentially could get four players on there. Um, or a MAME game, for example, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, the potential is there for you. So with all that said, this is one of the first builds. I know there's more builds coming out just like this, but really cool to see, especially with the... Um, you know, you figure you could buy a 128 gigabyte thumb drive for around $20. You buy the PS Classic for around $20 with tax and everything. You're talking $45 for two controllers and a fully functional emulation machine. What century are we living in? This is crazy, awesome, cool. Um, so with all that said, that's what I think. Um, it's, you know, compared to the Raspberry Pi, it's different. It's not as fast. It doesn't have as many options it hasn't been developed for so long so i don't think that's a fair comparison but if you just want to get into emulation you want to get in cheap or make a quick get like this is now gift worthy for a friend who you guys grew up playing super nintendo or nintendo it's definitely there so that's what i think let me know what you all think don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one